I have a very long and weird relationship with KD Plasma. I have professed to really enjoying it when I first started using Linux, and then as I kind of learned more and more, KD Plasma didn't really sour for me, but more I was more experienced with the fact that it is, at times, a buggy mess. And I've been very negative about Plasma over the course of the last couple of years. You've heard me talk about it on the podcast and in several videos about how Plasma just isn't for me simply because it's not stable enough. And that's just kind of the truth of it. Now, I talk to many people in the Linux community, many of whom use Plasma on a daily basis. They use it as their daily driver. They've used it as their daily driver for a long period of time. And a lot of them tell me that Plasma is very, very stable for them. They don't have any of the issues that I experience. And while I abhor the whole, well, it works for me argument, I can't deny the fact that Plasma does work for a lot of people very, very well. And that a lot of the issues that I do have or have had in the past are probably because of hardware, right? I have a couple really weird monitors and, you know, I, I've had a disinterest in switching to Wayland up until now. And all of the problems that were just kind of like, you know, me problems can be associated to, you know, well, me instead of Plasma. And some of my negativity probably wasn't warranted at all. Not to say that Plasma, of course, is perfect. It definitely does have its flaws. And if you follow, you know, their social accounts or whatever, you know that they're constantly fixing bugs and that bugs are kind of a, the name of the game when it comes to software development of this size. It just kind of happens, right? So I have had an, a journey when it comes to Plasma, plasma overall. And then when Plasma 6 came out, I had a weird experience because the whole relationship between Plasma and me kind of flipped. I had a great experience on 6. I had hardly any bugs whatsoever, and it worked really well, while a whole bunch of other people who switched to 6 had horrible experiences. They had a lot of bugs. It was a really weird situation to be in, where it was stable for me and not stable for a whole bunch of other people. Of course, I made a video saying that it was the most stable KDE experience that I ever had, and, of course, almost directly after that video, Plasma started to Plasma, if you will. <laughs> it definitely got some updates somewhere along the line, and that created more bugs than basically ever. It w became so bad that I couldn't use it. I had problems with my monitors going to sleep again. That's mostly a, probably a hardware problem because that's a, a universal problem across different desktop environments. And then I had, you know, pipeware problems, and I had problems with, you know, Things not being able to be dragged in the bar and the panel was flickering. And I had a whole bunch of really weird problems. And while I recorded some of those bugs, some of them I just assumed were, you know, again, me problems. And that led to me using basically GNOME for the last 60 days. But I've heard news that Plasma 6.1 solves some issues. So for the last week, I have been using Plasma 6.1. And I can actually show you that I'm there. This is my Plasma 6.1. Now, I have been using it, again, like I said, for a week, and I have some thoughts. First off, I'm weary, because I've had a positive experience recently with Plasma. Like I said, 6 was very stable for me, worked really well, didn't have a lot of bugs, and it, it was like boiling, you know, putting my hand in cold water and then slowly bringing it to the boil, because, you know, I, you know, I, I got comfortable there, and then all of a sudden, bam... I had bugs again, and I don't want to have that experience again, and I, if I tell you this is a very stable KDE experience, I'm worried that I'm going to jinx myself a little bit, because it has, in fact, been a very stable KDE experience. It, overall, I mean, I have experienced some bugs, like, I, I'll be frank with you, there have been some bugs, I still have an icons only task manager a bug where I can't drag the icons around, I'm not going to show you that because I messed up the, the video here already once. Uh, there, there's this bug here, like Brody showed this off, where the cursor just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's supposed to get a little bigger. They're just, you know, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. <laughs> the more you shake it, the bigger it gets. It's really weird. But none of these are game-breaking bu bugs, right? And none of the bugs that I've experienced, like there's one where uh, if I had a full-screen application here, I think I actually have a terminal here, right? I have a full-screen application and then I, you know, move it. it, it kind of flickers, and it's not as smooth as you'd expect it to be, like, I don't know if you guys can actually see that, it's, oh, it didn't do it that time, but it did it the time before, and, and sometimes it leaves, like, an artifact behind, so the, if I, like, drag it to another screen, sometimes part of the, this window just kind of, like, remains behind, 
it eventually goes away, but it, you know, it, I can't get it to happen all the time, and I don't know how to report it because it doesn't happen very often. I don't know what it's actually doing, but you know, there are those little bugs. But overall, it's been very stable. You know, I, I there are more themes now than there were when six first came out because they redid their theme stuff, so you, ha you didn't have as many themes available as you'd used to. So there was a lot more, you know, now than there was then, which is good. And there are a lot more plasmoids available now than there were then. A lot of them are really good. So the, a lot of the developers have had a chance to kind of update their old plasmoids to work with Plasma 6. So that's been a better experience. Dolphin has been a better experience. I don't experience any of the crashes or anything that I had did before. I've, I've had better experiences almost across the board with Plasma 6.1. And some of the new features or whatever, I, I'm not going to go through all of the new features, but the ones that I've noticed, specifically if I go to like uh, show panel configuration, this part here is new, right? Well, you know, we had this before in Plasma 6.1. It was more in the middle. There weren't these cool animations. So if I do add you know, widgets, you know, the there's some animations there or whatever, and it's supposed to kind of look nice and feel nicer. And, you know, that's great. They've done some work on making this a better experience, and overall it is a better experience. They do have it, so if you notice, if I wanted to say delete the show desktop or peek it desktop thing here, I can't do it with the normal way. So the normal way would be to have this icon or this pop-up here where it says remove. Here, it's kind of blocked by this. Now, you can right-click on this to do that, but it's not, you know, great. But other than that, this is a better experience than it was, and I think that they'll continue to make this better. It's just been a very good experience, but to go back to it, I'm very weary about it because I'm worried that as they bring out more updates to fix other bugs, they'll introduce more, and, and that's almost for sure going to happen. And as I made a video about, I'm trying to search for stability, so I need to make, I need to kind of weigh what's, you know, a priority for me. Do I want to have all of the awesome features of KDE but worry about instability all the time, or have less features and use GNOME? I've used both. KDE and GNOME quite a bit over the course of the last two months, and I don't know where I'm going to fall on that yet, but I'm glad that I tried 6.1. I think that a lot of the bugs that a lot of people experienced in Plasma 6 have been fixed over the course of the recent updates and with 6.1. So if you have tried, if you tried 6.0 and it was buggy for you, I'd highly recommend giving it another go. But like I said, I wouldn't expect miracles because 6.1 was very... It was a very hyped release by a lot of people in the community, right? And I don't know that this was necessarily coming from the developers or not. They don't usually hype up their releases or whatever. They just talk about every release like it's awesome. But I've, I heard a lot of people say that 6.1 was going to be very, very good. And it is very, very good. But don't expect it to be bug-free. It just That's just never going to happen when it comes to Plasma. You just kind of have to put up with the, the, the prickles of being, you know, Plasma. Like, it's just the way that it is. Overall, I've had a really good experience with it. I I've had some issues with screen capture, but that turned out not to be a Plasma problem. That turned out to be an OBS problem. Or not an OBS problem, but an OpenSUSE problem. Uh, I've, I've had some issues with OpenSUSE. Maybe I'll make a video about that you know, later on. But o overall, it's just been a very, very good experience. And I could do a whole video about my experiences comparing KDE and GNOME. And maybe that's something that I will do. But KDE versus GNOME is kind of a, 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 a spent topic, if you will. It's, it's, it's a topic that has been well covered over the course of the last 20 years. I don't think that I need to add to it even more than I already have. But overall, 6.1 does make it a harder question for me. Which, one, which way do I want to go? Do I want to go with the more stable GNOME or the more featureful KDE Plasma? Now that I know that 6.1 can work for me, I have to answer that question. I don't know which way I'm going to go. So, again, if you tried 6.0 and you had some problems, I'd try 6.1. If you've been on 5.27 for a long time and you have waited to upgrade to 6 until the first point release, I don't think that upgrading will be something that you regret. I will say, as always, when you're doing this type of upgrade, first off, make sure you have a proper backup. If you're using ButterFS, take yourself a snapshot because you'll probably be happy that you did. Uh, if you're not using ButterFS, you should use ButterFS. <laughs> and it's just kind of an aside there. But also just kind of make sure that you're prepared for the update because a lot of distros don't allow you to upgrade in place. A lot of the times you can't upgrade from Plasma 5 to Plasma 6 while using Plasma 5. You have to kind of go outside of Plasma 5 to install Plasma 6. It's a mess, unfortunately. Now, some distros have fixed that, some have not, so it's really going to depend on what distro you're on. So, 
uh, just kind of beware that it can be kind of quickly upgrading from five to six even today, even though it's been around for a couple of months at this point. So uh, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on Plasma 6.1, I know this was a little bit of a rambly video. I haven't made a lot of videos in a month, so I'm out of practice. It took me like 10 takes to this. Some of that was because of the screen capture thing, but also uh, I just uh, ran my mouth and said absolutely nothing, which is probably still the case with this video, but I'm I'm done. I, I needed to, uh, you know, be done with this video. Anyways, thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. That's all of these awesome people. You guys are all fantastic. I know that there are a couple of people that I haven't added to this lovely list here. I will get that done here in, in the next uh, few hours. Uh, I'm back at it. I'm back at working on YouTube again. Uh, the, the vacation was nice and real life is finally calmed down a little bit. So Matt's going to be coming back at you with some videos, including the long awaited NixOS review. It's not done, but it's being worked on. I promise. <laughs> like it's, it's actually actively being done. I'd say it's about 75% actually recorded. Uh, there are times, like I talked about on the podcast, where, or maybe it was the lug where I'm, you know, may want to just restart it, but that's beside their point. Anyways, thanks everybody. <laughs> Again, I've been very rambly. I apologize for that. Thanks everybody for watching. I sincerely appreciate all of your support throughout the last forever. So thank you so very much for that. I will see you next time. I hope you have a wonderful week. See ya. I also forgot how to do end. Like the end. I did none of the social stuff, none of that stuff. Leave a comment, whatever. Um, I'll get back to it eventually. Thanks for watching.